Emergency is over, but COVID-19 is not gone. The question is, is the virus still considered a threat? Dr. Steve Threlkeld, who is the medical director of infectious disease for Baptist Memorial Healthcare, is here to talk to us about it. First off, Dr. Threlkeld, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, is it still a threat, COVID-19? Well, thankfully, it has become much more of what people thought it was maybe in the first place. Uh, the people who are getting sick and hospitalized or unfortunately those who are elderly and have underlying medical problems. Most other people are doing pretty well with this infection, at least when they get it. So it's still a problem for twofold. Number one is those who already have poor health to begin with. It can still be serious. And then secondly, it'll be a long time before we have a handle on what long COVID is. We see people getting very aggressive diabetes, other kind of vascular things and clots and the like after COVID, the so-called long COVID syndrome that we don't fully understand that one yet. And it'll be a while before we realize what the risk is of, of what can happen to you after COVID. And, you know, I still see a lot of people wearing masks. I would imagine uh, that there is concern, uh, you know, in the public. Would you recommend that people still wear masks? You know, in crowded situations, uh, certainly it's not unreasonable to do that. Now, the regular pa uh, paper cloth masks that people wear Typically, really, the, the biggest protection there is if you have COVID and it keeps you from sending kind of your droplets and respiratory secretions to someone else. It doesn't do a great job of protecting you from getting COVID if you're around somebody with it close by. That really takes an N95 or a higher level sort of mask uh, in order to protect you from people around you with COVID. They're very effective. We took care of people with COVID in them for several years and did very well. But uh, with the regular paper mask, um, it's better if you have it, keeping you from giving it to other people. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the challenges that people face right now because of COVID? Well, there are a lot of things that really that we have to look at. Number one is continuing to improve our ability to fight the infection. Even as we speak, there are uh, modifications being made to vaccines. Newer monoclonal antibody technologies are being brought to bear in case we ever do have mutations that cause worse illness. And also just to keep the disease at bay, keep as many people from getting it. Uh, periodic vaccinations are likely to be necessary for this disease. It's going to be with us for a long time, but we're trying to make better ones, uh, ones that are uh, continue to be safe, but that may do a better job of warding off some of the mutants that might be out there. Now, some of it, even as the emergency expires, there'll be challenges and there will be people that will be probably cut from Medicaid rolls uh, nationally. That was that was prevented during some of the emergency uh, uh, situation further. Uh, the cost of things like vaccines and medications may be an issue. Right now, there's some stockpiles that are likely to last several months. But testing already, you can see, uh, that'll be set by, the, uh, you know, by what's available from the insurance company. So there could be some financial, a uh, little more difficulties at getting the therapies that you need. We still have good medicines. We still have good tests. And we still have good vaccines. We just hope that everybody can get what they need to, uh, to prevent this infection moving forward. I see. And so is this, uh, you touched on this briefly, but is this likely to become a part of our uh, vaccination or regimen each year, a, a yearly thing we would do? Afraid so, as we sit here now, really, um, you know, most of the vaccines we've had were based on the original Wuhan strain, which is long gone. But the vaccines that we'll see going forward will be based on the XBB variant, likely these newer variants that have come along based on the Omicron virus lineage. And so you know, we hope that they'll be very effective. But absolutely, it'll probably be a yearly process where people will look and see what variants are, uh, are circulating around the globe and in the U.S. and say, OK, this is the one we're going to settle on or maybe two to settle on that will best protect people, much as much like what we're used to seeing with influenza. We see that every year anyway. Uh, and then, of course, it'll be a slightly different thing in people who are immune suppressed or have uh, different types of, uh, you know, medications that suppress the immune system, transplants, different cancers. There may be some modifications as to what those people have to do. And, of course, they just have to be a little bit careful, more careful about getting the infection than others because they have a lot higher risk when they do get it. Dr. Michael Threlkeld, thank you so much for joining us. You have a good one, sir. Thank you, sir.